there is a big event that has just been announced and, and they're now advertising for it and trying to uh, get the word out uh, that I want to make you aware of. It's calling for the entire city to come out for the Love Rally on June 13th, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And you can see there that there's a picture of the Capitol and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it says there, starting downtown at the Capitol steps, marching to the riverfront, free food, free, free drinks, free mask, registration stations to vote, ending with Biscuits Fireworks Show, hashtag love matters. The thing about this event, because it may wind up being an excellent event. And tr the truth be told, it's actually pretty refreshing to see that. Because the symbol that they're using there is a very uniting symbol in Dr. Martin Luther King. They're not using Black Lives Matter, which even though I think that there may be some people that would use a hashtag like that that do have good intention, Black Lives Matter isn't just a hashtag, it's also an organization. And that organization calls for all kinds of crazy things like socialism. They call for basically a breakdown of the nuclear family, a breakdown of Western civilization. They're in favor of all kinds of things like Palestinian authority taking over Israel. I mean, they are very clearly a political branch the sort of an offshoot and a special interest group of the Democrat Party. They have a lot of their talking points that have nothing to do with black people and improving their lives, have nothing to do with black Americans. They are run by radical socialists, anarchists, so on and so forth. But there are some people that have no idea there even is an organization that still use the hashtag and they, what, you know, they mean something different by that. And I think that the, most of the rank and file people aren't like that, but they even didn't go with that because they know the controversial nature and the way that that tends to polarize people. And, and, you know, rightfully so, if you know the actual background of what Black Lives Matter does as an organization. And so they use instead the hashtag love matters. And everything that is in that graphic, I have no idea what the event's actually going to be like. I don't know who's actually running it. But everything in that graphic makes it seem as though this is something that they want everybody to be able to come out for. They want to stand in unity. It looks like something that's being organized, that they want to be peaceful. Because you don't go through these channels and try to make it all official and get permission from the city and everything like that if you're going to engage in a riot. I say all that to say, the commentary I'm about to provide is in no way saying that this particular event or this particular group are bad actors or bad people, because I don't know. I really have no idea about who's organizing this. I'm going to try to do some research and, and get back to you on that. But here's what I wanted to point out. It seems to me that there is a pretty stark contrast between how the city is treating this and how they treated the Get Back to Work Alabama rally that took place or at least was supposed to take place, on the Capitol steps about a month ago. And remember that I was there live streaming and covering that rally, that we promoted it here on the show. By and large, it was a bunch of freedom-loving Americans, several of which had businesses, weren't able to make gain, they just wanted to go back to work to provide for their family, and so... That, you may recall, when we were doing our live stream, and we talked about this at great deal when we were doing that, they had construction going on that magically had to take place about an hour to two hours before the event happened. And remember, I was there. I saw them setting up the barricades. This wasn't something that they had beforehand. We arrived. I got there like an hour, maybe an hour and a half early. And as I'm arriving, I'm seeing police start putting up construction barricades so that nobody could come. Because remember, this was a drive through rally. We weren't going to congregate. We weren't going to all meet in one place. In fact, we specifically had it set up. I say we as though I was part of the organization. I really wasn't. That was uh, Stand Up Alabama, I believe, is the name of the group that organized that. Uh, I was just there covering it. But anyway, the way that they had their set up, they had it to where people could drive down the main road there in front of the Capitol, step out of their car, come up to the microphone, make a quick statement, jump back in their car, drive off. They never had to come in contact with a single person, at least that was the plan. That's how the thing was organized, because of course we were in the throes of coronavirus at the time. You see, with this thing, which coronavirus is still a thing apparently, 
with this organization, not only are they apparently going to be allowed to congregate in mass in large group in front of the people, they, I mean, the advertisement literally says that they're encouraging the entire city to come out. And they're saying that it's going to be a march, which uh, if you're going to march, you kind of have to do it outside with a bunch of people in a row. I don't know how clumped together they're going to be, but they can't be real far apart if they're going to be marching. And then it's supposedly going to conclude since it's going to the riverfront. They said it's going to be a biscuits fireworks show. I assume what that means is they're either going to open up the riverfront itself, the you know the park there where the Harriet Two is, or they are going to open up. Riverwalk Stadium, where the Biscuits play. Either way, they have to get permission from the city to do that. So, based on what I'm seeing, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody in the city of Montgomery that, that may know something that I don't, based on all the information that is provided to me, it seems as though this thing not only has the blessing of the city, but the city's actually helping them orchestrate it. Which, by the way, that's fine. I've been saying for weeks on end now that there really should be no such thing as a mass gathering outside that is canceled. At least not during the day, which this one's going to be at least partially during the day, with the way that we're having, I mean, we're coming up on the summer solstice, so the, there's a very good chance we will continue to have sunlight until close to 8 p.m. when this thing is supposed to end. So it's going to be mostly in daylight. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think what these people are doing is unsafe. Even if you do have an awful lot of people standing around one another, if you're in sunlight, the transmission rate of this thing is practically non-existent. And that was true whether you're in Montgomery. That was true when we did the report on the beach where CNN was trying to make it look like, oh, these crazy lunatics from Alabama are being so cavalier, being on the beach six feet apart from each other, not wearing masks, around people in their own households. And, oh my gosh, they're... There's no attempt to enforce those rules. Where are the police officers telling these people they need to evacuate the sunny beach to make sure that they don't get the virus? That's where we were about a week ago. And now, and remember in response to that, the mayor of our esteemed city, Mayor Stephen Reed, went on CNN to basically go, yep, that's right. There's, there's, they're being so cavalier about it. They're being so reckless by being out there six feet apart from one another on the beach, even though I'm sure there were some people that weren't six feet apart. But if you look at the aerials, you can see that there was a lot of social distancing going on. He goes out there and says, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm appalled at how cavalier they're being and they're going to bring this disease back to Montgomery. Mayor Reed sees that there's going to be this event coming. Oh yeah, sure. Use the stadium, cram as many people as you want in there. Use the Capitol steps, even though I'm still convinced that it was Mayor Reed, since it was the MPD doing this, that set up the construction barricades to make sure that there was a construction going on during the protest for the Get Back to Work Alabama rally to where they actually had to move the protest from where it was originally intended, making it ironically less safe and less able for people to socially distance because they would have to either walk or they would have to stand out there on the street corner as opposed to going up to the podium that they had set up ahead of time. Still convinced that was Mayor Reed's call. Can't prove it, but he seems like the most likely culprit. But yeah, when CNN needed a mouthpiece from the state of Alabama to confirm what they were already saying about how dangerous the beaches in Alabama were, they didn't go to the mayor of Mobile or Gulf Shores or Orange Beach or any of the communities down there in the Gulf. They went to Mayor Reed because they knew he was going to be the good little DNC soldier that they know that he is, that he's going to parrot their talking points and he's going to say exactly what they want to hear. And yet, Mayor Reed continued the shtick. It didn't just end there. Mayor Reed continued saying stuff like this as recently as just last week. Let's go ahead and check out this quote in the Montgomery Advertiser from our Mayor Stephen Reed. So you'll see there the headline from the Montgomery Advertiser, Mayor Reed Mask wearing mandate may be presented to city council as early as Tuesday. Oh, and uh, you'll see that I highlighted the date there. What does that date say? Oh, right. 5 p.m. on Friday, May the 29th. So 11 days ago, Mayor Reed was saying, and this is a quote from the article, Reed said the increase in numbers this week, including four deaths since Thursday alone, is a, quote, new high-water mark that means the tide has not yet turned 
in this pandemic. We cannot fast forward this process, Reed said. By doing so, we would slow down or reverse the progress that we have made. That's why we're moving cautiously, why we're moving very deliberately. Mayor Reed, who is saying you have to wear a mask if you're going to be walking around the sidewalks there in Montgomery, we're going to make that mandatory to make sure that we're not spreading the virus because we've hit a new high watermark, uh, we're having more deaths and, and more coronavirus cases than we ever have, which, by the way, the case number in Montgomery is going up. That is true. Mayor Reed is correct in that. But what's ridiculous here is that he's saying that we're, we're going to have a mandatory mask, just like we did, or, or just like the city of Birmingham did with Mayor Woodfin, despite the fact that there's no evidence that it actually transmits outside. In fact, the vast majority of evidence points to the opposite, that it only really spreads in close contact with another human being when you're inside. Despite that, he's saying we're going to put up mandatory masks, even though the World Health Organization can't freaking make up its mind whether masks are actually effective at preventing the spread of the virus or not. And not to be outdone by himself, here is again Mayor Reed on again... May the 29th, Friday, 11 days ago. You can see this headline. Montgomery wants the state to consider localized, quote, shelter-in-place order, city ponders mandatory mask. Now, this is a quote from Mayor Reed again. Our cases have not plateaued. We're not out of this crisis. We're still in the middle of it, said Reed on Friday. Even though we all want to get back to where we were prior to this pandemic, we can't force that. The more we try to force it, the longer we're going to stay in it. We want businesses back full throttle more than anyone, but we can't force that at the expense of our long-term progress in this community. Oh, all right, Mayor Reed. So we're in the middle of this pandemic. Montgomery's in panic time. You went on CNN to, pet, uh, to, to peddle the panic porn and to make sure everybody knew, guys, we're in the middle of this. Montgomery's a hotbed. And unless you think, well, Caleb, that was, you know, 11 days ago, which granted, not exactly ancient history, but maybe the, med the numbers in Montgomery have gotten better. Oh, nay, nay. They have not. In fact, they have gotten worse. Now, I never was in favor of government-mandated shutdowns. I'm not making the case that we should stay shut down. Never have made that case. I'm not making the case that we should be invoking these masks. What I am saying is, though, there is a blatant and obvious double standard to any fair-minded person looking at how Mayor Reed and the city of Montgomery handled and talked about the protesters in the Get Back to Work Alabama protest and this event here. That all of a sudden, when it's an event that might make them look good or something that somewhat fits their agenda, oh yeah, roll out the red carpet, whatever you guys need. You can use Riverwalk Stadium, you can use the riverfront, you can use the Capitol steps. We don't care if there's 10,000 of you smashed up together, breathing on each other. We don't care. And again, I don't think that that's necessarily dangerous if you're in the blazing June Alabama sun. But the point is, he said that it was, and now he's saying that it wasn't. When it was a bunch of protesters that Mayor Reed disagreed with, then they were a bunch of dangerous radicals that needed to be curtailed, that he had to shut down the road. I, again, I'm still convinced that was Mayor Reed, that we have to shut down the road in front of the Capitol to make sure that they don't do it. And by the way, they've still not done any construction on it. Still not. That was a brand new paved road. Still haven't done any construction on that. They did that specifically to stop that protest from happening, or at the very least, try to stymie it. On this thing, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll do whatever you want to. We'll, we'll help you gather the people up in close quarters. We'll put you in Riverwalk Stadium. <sighs> there are no words. This is the most insane double standard I've ever seen. In the course of 11 days, we went from Mayor Reed saying that this is going to be the end of the world. We're going to have to shut down the city again, even though the state opened it back up. We're going to have to do a local shutdown here in Montgomery. We're going to have to mandate that every single person wear a mask in freaking June in Alabama. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's no big deal. Yeah, it's perfectly safe. Go out, have fun. Gather up as many people as you want to and march down to the riverfront. The only 
plausible explanation that I've come up with. And it's something that really just confirmed what I already knew. Mayor Reed is a very loyal soldier to the DNC. He does whatever they want him to do. He watches MSNBC and CNN to get his liberal talking points, and then he adjusts his policy accordingly. He's not somebody that is sticking up for and listening to the citizens of Montgomery. He's trying to do what will most ingratiate him to the National Democrat Party so that he can get a job a little bit higher up with them at some point. The man's a political opportunist. Only instead of being, you know, a populist where he just sticks his finger in the wind and waits to see which way the political winds are blowing, which granted is not the best policy for being a leader, but at the very least, at least you are listening to the people when you do that. Mayor Reed says whatever he thinks is going to help him move up in the ranks in the Democrat Party. I didn't agree with a lot of what Todd Strange did. He and I didn't have a great relationship, and, and I thought that he was way too big government for my taste, which, I mean, granted, I'm basically a federalist libertarian, so virtually everybody is too big government for my taste. But nonetheless, I had my disagreements with Strange. I didn't like everything that he did. I was pretty critical of him on a pretty regular basis. But at least he wasn't a shill for his party in Washington and did whatever they asked him to. And no other explanation makes sense, especially when you consider that the protests that happened when we were talking about reopening the economy and trying to get the shutdown ended, that that protest happened at a time when Montgomery had one of the lowest rates of coronavirus in the state. Now, Montgomery is only tailing Mobile, which, by the way, has almost double its population. We are only trailing Mobile County by a few hundred cases. We have a far greater percentage of our population that is infected with the coronavirus right now when this event is, is scheduled to take place in just a few days than it was when it was the stand-up Alabama people. I don't want him to cancel the event, but at least it would show some semblance of consistency. I think these people absolutely have a right to go out and march and exercise their First Amendment rights just like the stand-up Alabama people did. What ticks me off is that people like Mayor Reed that are on a power trip start picking and choosing the political groups that they like and the ones that they don't and use that power to prevent people that they don't like from exercising their rights. That is as un-American as it gets. <laughs> So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.